guys, it's Patrick. So if you haven't seen it yet, I made a little short film for the Moment Invitational Festival. <music> Moment Lenses are holding a film festival and the criteria was that you had to make an entire short film using only your phone and their lenses. The Moment Invitational. It is a film festival dedicated to the mobile creative. So I've been kind of sitting on this for the last like few weeks, ever since they uh, they kind of announced that this was going to be happening. Do it! Just do it! Uh, on Sunday, we finally got around to shooting it. So I grabbed my girlfriend and said, listen, um, I have this weird idea. Let's just kind of go with the flow and see what happens. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, uh, you can check it out in the link in the description below. Um, I would definitely recommend that you watch it before watching this because I'm going to be diving into the sort of process that went into sort of cutting it all together. And uh, it would make a lot more sense if you watched it. Um, ahead of time before seeing this. So before we get into this timeline here, which actually, in my opinion, looks quite messy, and you're probably going to be wondering what the hell is going on, and I'll dive into what all of this sort of means. Um, before that, I kind of want to give you a little bit of the background of what my sort of thinking was going into this and my sort of planning. But originally, my I had this sort of crazy astronaut idea where we were going to be on this like remote planet, and there's going to be some After Effects stuff, and it just ended up being too much, and it was kind of making me a little bit nervous about the timeline. And then I had this other idea that was to do with a heist. And I was going to do this, like, this sort of like one shot from the back of a car and like two guys were going to rob a convenience store. And I was going to shoot it all on one in like a one-er. Uh, and then that also became too daunting. So I said, let me just kind of go back to basics, um, think up some inspiration that I really like. And so I kind of came up with this idea about a call girl who is also a hitman. So like a prostitute hitman, hit hit girl, I guess you can call it. Um, and I was kind of just pulling on the idea of just sort of like this 80s kitschy sort of gallo horror. Um, but then I was also thinking about like Eyes Wide Shut and like the cinematography and that's always been, been a, I've been a huge fan of. And I'll actually show you that clip really quick. So um, the first thing that kind of caught my eye was this from Eyes Wide Shut. This is a Stanley Kubrick movie, and this scene is Tom Cruise sort of like wandering through the streets at night, and it's super atmospheric. Uh, the music adds so much to the tension, and I've always just loved its sort of simplicity, so I'll just let it play for a few seconds here. So essentially he's just being followed and the scene sort of plays out and I won't spoil it because I, I think I definitely would say watch, watch this movie. It's one of my favorite Stanley Kubrick movies. Um, but I just love the cinematography and sort of how simple it is. Um, a lot of it is him just sort of like walking by these like storefronts um, with the city in the background. Um, from my understanding, they actually didn't even shoot this in New York. They shot it on a soundstage or they shot it in London. So which that's really interesting. They sort of like recreated an entire block of New York. Um, and that sort of was the inspiration for the intro um, of this entire piece. I was like, I kind of want to create a little bit of that mood. Ultimately, it ended up being something entirely different, but that was what was in the back of my mind when I was shooting. So I'm just going to play the sequence out from the beginning right now. Okay, so you can see that just like sort of color tone wise, that's what I was going for from this. Um, I mean, it might be a little bit of a stretch, but this was in the back of my mind and I was sort of like, I want this to look as close to this as possible. Let's talk about the opening title sequence. So let me just play that one more time. So I had a friend message me saying that this was probably his favorite part of the whole thing. I agree, I actually, this is, I love this. The inspiration for this came from a movie called Super Dark Time. So let me play the intro. This is another fantastic movie. It's on Netflix if you get a chance to watch it. It's absolutely amazing. But the intro sequence is like really caught me right away. And this is the opening title sequence for Super Dark Times. Yeah. 
Now, the thing that I love so much about that was the like driving punk rock track happening in the background. Um, another sort of inspiration, I guess, in the back of mind for this was the Enter the Void titles, which is a lot of just like this flickering. The way I made this in Final Cut is I took a bunch of generators, the Vivid generator, which you can see right here. So under generators, uh, we're going to go to Vivid. Where are you? This one. So I just took a bunch of these, put them here. And then when you're in there, you can actually just change the color of it. So after I made like these four or five of them, whatever, I just sort of copy and paste it. And then I started deactivating some of them. So if you press the V button, it turns it off. Um, and that kind of just added a little bit of the black in there as well. But then also all I'm doing is taking this font and I've sort of keyframed it. So that it's slowly increasing in size. So that when you get to the end, it's right there at about full percent. So if you take a look here, um, we end at about 75%, but we started at about 32%. Um, the last thing I did here was I added bad TV, which is the VHS effect. Um, I guess at its stock value, which is around there, I guess around 15%. And that became this. Now for the, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. For the music for this, I found, um, let me just deactivate that for a second. You can just hear the song itself. This was a song from Epidemic Sound, which is some low-tuned metal thing that I found on Epidemic Sound. Um, it wasn't enough on its own, in my opinion, so if you just play it through, um, I felt like it needed something. It needed like a yell, so I found a scream sound effect on Epidemic Sound as well. So I'll just kind of play that. <laughs> so you have this scream happening in conjunction with this metal track, which ultimately became this. So super happy with that intro title sequence. Very, very easy to make, um, but I think it turned out pretty cool given its simplicity. Um, originally I had this idea where I was just gonna go to white, like I was just gonna go straight to this, um, basically on black and complete silence, um, kind of similar to the intro for 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is just like a lot of crazy, sporadic motion, then all of a sudden it just stops on this sort of white title sequence. But ultimately I ended up going with this crazy punch to the face. So here we go back into the Tom Cruise vibes. We'll call this section Kubrick Cruise or something or whatever. Um, for this, uh, the audio from the Pixel 2 wasn't very good. Good. I mean, it was good, but it, it, it Filmic Pro kept cutting out on me. Like the audio would just stop randomly. Um, so what happened was like, if you hear just the audio from the Pixel 2, it doesn't actually sound that bad. You can hear a little bit of my breathing that was bothering me. So I ended up just killing that and recreating the sound in Foley um, using sound effects basically from Final Cut's library. Um, so I just took the sound effects like City, um, the footsteps I got from Epidemic Sound. I tried to match them up as best as possible. I doubt they're actually on on time, um, but they worked enough in my opinion, given how short this is. Um, so this whole sequence, I kind of wish they actually had a little bit more time. I know the short film recommendations for this for a moment were to be under three minutes. Um, I would love to probably reshoot this. Um, this even just this intro sequence, I shot so much of this footage. Like even if I just drag this out, um, there's just a lot of this going on, and I I just love the simplicity of just someone walking through the city. So I just I shot so much of it. Um, this sequence in particular was shot entirely with the moment telephoto lens, and I just there's something really interesting about the telephoto lens. For photos, I actually find it a little bit soft, but for video, it's just it's just the right focal length to give a little bit of depth of field. Um, you notice it a lot here in this up close shot. Um, you can see in this area right there, you're actually starting to blur out a little bit of the scene tower and the city in the backdrop, whereas she's relatively in focus. This shot um, is one of the only, I think the only wide, the only telephoto wide that I used, or sorry, the only moment wide um, that I used in the entire, the entire piece, I think. Um, as we get to the end, there might be another shot, but I can't fully remember right now, but I believe this is the only one we ever used um, with the wide. While we're back here, just before we get back into the sequence, I wanted to talk about um, this uh, this voiceover. So let me just play this in isolation. Room 327, 9 p.m. Do it clean. So the way I did this is a text-to-speech. It was just a really, I just Google searched text-to-speech and then I pitched it down. 
And ultimately it became this. I just wrote in the words, like the script, and then I recorded from the text-to-speech online generator, like a Microsoft Sam kind of thing. Um, and I chopped it up a little bit just to slow it down, just to slow down the cadence. And um, I'm actually really happy with this, how this turns out. Room 327, 9 p.m. Do it clean. Um, and that's sort of like her, um, I don't want to say handler or pimp, but basically the man in the clouds or the man in the sky that's telling her her next job um, for that, what she needs to do. And that turned out really well. It's creepier than I ever could have done myself. So that's a cool little tip there. If you need a voiceover done cheap and quick, and by cheap, I mean free, just use a text-to-speech um, translator. All right, let's get back into this sequence. So like I said, I built up all of the audio underneath. And just so you know, we're going to get into how I graded all this. I just kind of want to break down the sequences first, and then I'll show you how I did, how I processed all this footage. Um, so essentially, yeah. So we play this sequence through, uh, and she's just walking through the city. And I'm shooting this all entirely handheld. I lied. Here's the other wide, the wide shot. Um, that's the only other wide shot other than the intro shot. So this one right here is wide. And I've shot all of this handheld. I just basically walked around the city with her. And um, I really like that vibe. I know everyone likes gimbals and Yasmo and all that stuff. But in my opinion, I like the shakiness. Long live Paul Greengrass and his shaky footage. So now that that sequence is done, we're getting into the hotel room. Um, this was one where I actually used a lot of the audio from the pixel itself. Um, you can see here I was pulling a little bit of the audio in there, um, but for this in particular, aside from the door closing, um, this is the audio from the Pixel, and then I added a little bit of room tone, just to give a little bit of like a buzzy, buzzy vibe. So this plays through, and the way I did that is I locked the exposure in Filmic Pro so that when she came in and turned that light on, um, there wasn't like a boost. It was I had the exposure locked, so that's actually her turning on the light. That's actually kind of cool when you watch it in slow-mo. Um, and then at this point, I've added a little bit of Foley right here, so you can hear the door close. And this is where things get fun. This grain that's happening here is actually from Filmic Pro. And that's something I learned while shooting is that it's just a really noisy camera. And I don't know if that's the Pixel's fault or if it's Filmic Pro's fault, but it seemed to not matter how low I got that ISO. Um, I was just always getting this grain out of it. I was shooting, I shot all of this in 2K um, just to try and save a little bit of space in RAM because it was just chewing my battery. I think I charged my phone three times and we only shot for, but this whole thing took about two hours to shoot. And I charged the phone, had to, I had to charge the phone three times. So that was a big pain in the ass. Um, so the grain I, is is natural, if you want to call it that. But it was the, it was the grain that kind of came specifically from the camera. I think it works in the context of the, of the piece. But if you were doing this for any sort of like commercial work, I'm not too sure I'd be happy with that. The actual stock camera from the Pixel does not provide grain like that. I did add a little bit of post grain. We'll get into that as we get into the post, um, the sort of like the, the LUT application. Um, but this in particular, sorry, this shot here really shows, especially right here, um, just how grainy the, 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 the sensor was. So the way we lit this was, I kind of had these two LED lights that I got on Amazon, like super cheap that are colored. Um, and I set them to blue and pink. So there's a pink light that you can't see right now, but it's off to the side and there's this blue light. And then I used some fog just to add a little bit of atmosphere, some atmosphere in a can. Um, I'll put links to that. I'll put links to the lights and I'll put links to the fog in the description. Um, but all of this is practical. So I just put these lights up and this is the look I got. I mean, I'll take all the, the applications off, sorry, the, uh, the grading off. Um, I also shot it in 69, so the bars aren't being added. That's the actual, that's the actual picture. So I don't have a cinema bars applied to anything like this. That's the actual image in a 19 by 20 um, uh, uh, canvas. So this is what it looks like with nothing done to it. I've done no, this is no color correction. This is directly out of the camera. It actually, to be honest, didn't even really need much of a grade. Um, I'll just throw that back on real quick, just so you can see it actually darkens just a little bit. Um, I think a lot of people might even prefer this look, um, but I just wanted to make it a little bit more moody. Um, so once we get through here, she's got all her her weapons of mass destruction. She's putting the plastic down. I'll play this through. I'm just gonna kick 
kill the music real quick. Um, you can hear just some of the camera audio there. Um, this is again, this is all telephoto. So now we're back into the bathroom sequence here. Um, she presses the cassette button and this is where we had fun. I, now for this, I had a pink light over here and a blue light over here. Uh, could be the opposite sides, but there was a pink and blue light, same lights that I used for the sequence, but um, I had them just both sort of faced up at her and shot this entirely with a telephoto. Um, for this one in particular, so with the music, it helps. I'll just play this sequence really quick. So this, you can see there's like a slight zoom happening here. I did that all in post. Um, so I'm starting at about 100% and then I keyframed and I zoomed in to about 155, it looks like, yeah, 155. Because I was shooting 2K and my post final edit was in 1080, I had some room to punch in. Um, and these like sort of slow zooms are just like so stereotypical of 80s horror movies. And also the whole you know, woman getting ready in the mirror, putting her lipstick on is something I've always wanted to try and recreate. A really, really cool side effect was this lens flare that happened. The, the telephoto like has these, has a really interesting artifacts um, when you point it directly at light or have a light source pointed at it. Um, and I just love how that, that lens flared here. Um, I'm a huge fan of lens flares and that, that one's really dope. Now the way the whole sequence ends was we added a little bit of a door knock, signifying that her mark has arrived. We cut here, again, shot this on the telephoto. Room 327. Bring back the VO. 9 p.m. Do it clean. We brought in the intro as an outro. Finally, with my end credits, I won't get too much into this. I like to keep them simple. This is just like straight Helvetica um, with a weird kind of creepy 1910s um, sort of like classical track that I found on Epidemic Sound. <laughs> I just sort of like the juxtaposition of this sort of like heavy into this pleasantness. <laughs> Super random. All right, let's really quick talk about how I graded all this. So let me just take off all these adjustment layers and we get back to the beginning. So again, this you're seeing bars here because I actually shot 16.9 out of Filmic Pro. So that's why it looks this way. This is where you can see just how noisy um, the camera was and again I had the ISO set as low as I could but and I shot it in filmic log and I think because I shot in log that's why it ended up being so um, noisy which is unfortunate because I'd like to keep shooting in this profile but not if it's like that like if we just zoom in on this that's just awful right um, that's a hundred percent that's just like no bueno it's super blotchy it's really noisy so my whole agenda was to try and clean this up a bit so let me just retrace my steps here. So that was, I did put cinema bars on with this um, and just a little bit of film grain. So the realistic grain at like 20. Um, it just added a lip to my, in my opinion, just adds a little bit of character that is a little bit less abrasive than the standard noise that's coming out of the Pixel 2. Um, for this, we added a LUT. So for, originally I was playing with Film Convert Pro. Um, I didn't end up using Film Convert Pro's um, grade. I t ended up turning it off, but I still have that application there. Um, the LUT that I'm using for this is called Hollywood, which I'll put a link to. Um, it's sort of like a Kodachrome kind of vibes. You can see it just really brings out the punchiness of the color within the neon. Um, and it also crushes the blacks. So the crushing of the blacks is going to get rid of a lot of that noise. And that just cleaned things up a little bit better. You're still getting noise out here in the shadows and whatnot, but given the vibe of this 80s sort of nostalgia aesthetic, I think it worked okay. So that is the LUT application. Um, this final one here was Letterbox again, just so it could cover up um, my title sequence. But that's it for the grade. I did actually did zero adjustments to the image itself. This is straight out of the Pixel 2. Um, I just added Hollywood um, at 100%. And that's about it. Like if we can experiment here, you can see what some other LUTs look like. Um, we can throw on maybe Aspen or let's try this. Um, and you can just see all the different sort of applications that would happen. Right. So if, in my opinion, Hollywood was the way to go. It just added the right amount of punch, but it wasn't too dark. 
And that's about it. It was a really, really simple shoe. We shot this sequence in about an hour, which was just sort of like walking around the city. And then once we had the hotel room, it was just basically me walking Fran through, you know, taking the stuff out of the bag. We only did like one or two takes of this sequence. And that was about it. My last thing was actually just making this music. So I made this track um, in Logic. And so that was that was fun. And that was one of my last steps of this entire thing is like, so once I had the sequence kind of laid out, um, I opened up Logic and cut this track together and plopped it in. And then we exported. And that's about it. I had a lot of fun shooting it. Um, the one thing I learned is that I love the telephoto the best for, for video. I think that the wide is good if you're doing some like sort of handheld establishing shots, much like this one, um, because the Pixel 2 in particular has very good in-body image stabilization through software. And I think the lens is optically stabilized too. And then coupled with a really wide angle, you're just, you're not getting much shake. But that being said, I do love the shake in sequences like this, where there's a bit of just organic movement as the camera kind of moves, particularly in this as well. Um, in my opinion, just kind of has a little bit more of a natural feel and whereas gimbals feel really robotic. So if you have any questions about this entire uh, film, please leave me a comment. Um, this is an entirely new thing for me. I've never done sort of like a screen recording behind the scenes. So if I totally screwed this up, please let me know. I want to make this better. Um, Thank you for bearing with me on this sort of like first endeavor into something like this, but I hope this gave you a nice little look into my process and how we made red lipstick. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.